What's up, YouTube? You're in the safe zone, and I'm back with another educational and informational video. In tonight's video, I'm going to cover 11 signs you're dating a narcissist and how to get out. So let's jump right into it. Narcissistic personality disorder isn't the same as having self-confidence or being self-absorbed. When someone posts one too many selfies or flex pics on their dating websites or on social media, that's probably self-confidence. But a true narcissist is someone who, with a narcissistic personality disorder, it is a mental health condition characterized by an inflated sense of importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, lack of empathy for others, and often having trouble relationships. What it boils down to is that selfishness at the extreme level, expense of others, plus the inability to consider others' feelings at all. Narcissistic personality disorder, like most mental health or personality disorders, isn't black and white. Narcissism actually falls on a spectrum. The most recent edition of the DSM-5 lists nine criteria for narcissistic personality disorder, but it speci specifies that someone only needs to meet five of them to be clinically qualified as a narcissist. Let's list them, okay? Number one, grandiose, self, grandiose sense of self-importance. Number two, preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Number three, belief that they are special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special high status people or institutions. Number four, the need for excessive admiration. Number five, sense of entitlement. Number six, interpersonally exploitative behavior. Number seven, lack of empathy. Number eight, envy of others or a belief that others are envious of them. And number nine, demonstration of arrogant and haughty behaviors or attitudes. That said, knowing the official diagnostic criteria doesn't usually make it easier to spot a narcissist, especially when you're romantically involved with one. It usually not possible to determine if someone has narcissistic personality disorder without the diagnosis of a qualified expert. Number one, you could be dating a narcissist if they were charming at first. It started out as a fairy tale. Maybe they text you constantly or told you they loved you within the first month. Something experts refer to as love bombing. Maybe they tell you how smart you are or emphasize how compatible you are, even if you've just started dating or seeing each other. But as soon as you do something to disappoint them, they turn on you immediately. And usually you'll have no idea of exactly what you did. How narcissists treat you or when they turn on you actually has nothing to do with and everything to do with their own beliefs. If someone came on too strong at the beginning, beware. Sure, we all love to feel lusted for, but real love has to nurture and grow. If you think it's too early for them to really love you, then it probably is. Or if you feel like they don't know enough about you to actually love you, they probably don't. People with narcissistic personality disorder will try to manufacture superficial connections early on in the relationship. That is something to definitely watch out for. Number two, you could be dating a narcissist if they hog the conversation talking about how great they are. Everything is always about them. Narcissists love to constantly talk about their own accomplishments and achievements with grandiose. They do this because they feel better and smarter than everyone else. 
and also because it helps them create a false narrative of themselves. They're also too busy talking about themselves to even listen to you. The warning is two part here. First, your partner won't stop talking about themselves. And second, your partner won't engage in conversation about you. Ask yourself, what happens when you do talk about yourself? Do they ask follow-up questions and express any type of interest to learn more about you? Or do they make it about themselves? Number three, you could definitely be dating a narcissist if they feed off of your accomplishments. They need a lot of praise. And if you're not giving it to them, they'll fish for it. That's why they're constantly looking at you to tell them how great they are. Narcissists use other people. People who are typically highly empathetic to supply their sense of self-worth and make them feel powerful. But because of their low self-esteem, their egos can be slighted very easily, with increases, which increases their needs for compliments. Folks who are actually self-confident won't solely rely on you or anyone else to feel good about themselves. The main difference between folks who are confident and those with narcissistic personality disorder is that narcissists need others to lift them up and lift themselves up only by putting others down. Two things people with high self-confidence do not do. Number four, you definitely could be dating a narcissist if they lack empathy. This is a very important one. A narcissist does not have any feelings. They don't feel anything. They don't feel anything. Lack of empathy or the inability to feel how another person is feeling is one of the hallmark characteristics of a narcissist. Narcissists lack the skill to make you feel seen, validated, understood, or accepted because they don't grasp the concepts of those feelings. Does your partner care when you've had a bad day at work, fight with your best friend, or scuffle with your parents? Or do they get bored when you express the things that's making you mad or sad? The inability to empathize or even sympathize is often the reason why many, if not all narcissist relationships eventually collapse, whether they're romantic or not. Number five. You could be definitely dating a narcissist if they don't have any or many long-term friends. I'm going to read that one again. If they don't have any or many long-term friends. Most narcissists won't have any long-term real friends. Dig deeper into their connections and you may notice that they only have casual acquaintances, buddies they trash talk, and nemesis. As a result, they might lash out with you when you want to spend time with your friends. Questions to ask yourself. Number one, how does your partner treat someone they don't want anything from? Number two, does your partner have any long-term friends? Number three, do they have or talk about wanting a nemesis? Number six, you definitely could be dating a narcissist if they pick on you constantly. Maybe at first it felt like teasing, but then it got mean or became constant. Suddenly, everything you do from what you wear and eat to who you hang out with and what you watch on TV is a problem for them. They'll put you down, call your names, hit you with hurtful one-liners, and make jokes that aren't quite funny. Their goal is to lower others' self-esteem so that they can increase their own because it makes them feel powerful. What more, reacting to what they say only reinforces their behavior. A narcissist loves a reaction. They love the reaction. They feed off of the reactions. If they knock you down with insults when you do something worth celebrating, get away. A narcissist might say, you were able to do that because I didn't sleep well. Or some excuse to make it seem like you have an advantage that they didn't have. 
They want you to know that you're not better than them because to them, nobody is better than them. Number seven, that you may be dating a narcissist is they gaslight you. Gaslighting is a form of manipulation and emotional abuse. And it's a hallmark of narcissism. Narcissists may spew blatant lies, false accusations toward others, spin the truth, or ultimately distort your reality. Some signs of gaslighting includes you feel more anxious and less confident than you used to. You often wonder if you're being too sensitive. You feel like everything you do is wrong. You always think it's your fault when things go wrong. You're apologizing often. You have a sense that something's wrong but aren't able to identify what it is. You often question whether your response to your partner is appropriate. You make excuses for your partner's behavior. They do this to cause others to doubt themselves as a way to gain superiority. Narcissists thrive off of being worshipped, so they use manipulation tactics to get you to do just what they want you to do. Number eight, they dance around defining a relationship. There are thousands of reasons someone might not want to label your relationship. But if your partner is exhibiting some of the other symptoms on this list and won't commit, it's likely a red flag. Some narcissists will expect you to treat them like they're your partner so they can reap the intimate, emotional, and sexual benefits while also keeping an eye out for prospects who they deem superior. In fact, you may notice that your partner flirts with or looks at others in front of you, your family, or your friends. If you speak up and down, up and on your feelings about their disrespect, they will blame you for causing a fuss, call you crazy, and use it as to further reasons not to commit fully to you. If you don't say a word, non-spoken messages that you don't deserve to be respected. If it sounds like a lose-lose situation, that's because it is. But remember that you deserve someone who is as committed to you as you are to them. Number nine, they think they're right about everything and they never apologize. Fighting with a narcissist feels impossible. There is no debating or compromising with the narcissist because they are always right. They won't necessarily see a disagreement as a disagreement. They'll just see it as them teaching you some truth. A you may often know that you're dating a narcissist if you feel like your partner doesn't hear you, won't understand you, doesn't take responsibility for their part in an issue, or doesn't ever try to compromise. While ending the relationship is the best game plan with the narcissist, it is advised at avoiding negotiation and arguments. It will make you the lack of a fight. The less you fight back, the less power you can give them over you. And because they never think they're wrong, they never apologize about anything. The inability to apologize could reveal itself in situations where your partner is obviously at fault, like showing up for a dinner reservation late, not calling when they said they would, canceling important plans last minute, like meeting your parents or friends. Good partners are able to recognize when they've done something wrong and they apologize for it. Number 10, they panic when you try to break up with them. This is very important. As soon as you back away, a narcissist will try that much harder to keep you in their lives. At first, they may love bum you. They'll say all the right things to make you think they have changed. The romantic relationships will take until they find someone else to date. Number 11, and when you show them you're really done, they lash out at you. If you insist that you're done with the relationship, they'll make it their goal to hurt you for abandoning them. Their ego is so severely bruised that it causes them to feel rage and hatred for anyone who wronged them. That's because everything is everyone else's fault, including the breakup. The result? 
They may badmouth you to save face, or they may start immediately dating someone else to make you feel jealous and help heal their ego. Or they'll try to steal your friends. It's because a good reputation means everything to them. And they won't let anyone or anything interfere with that. Okay. So, you're dating a narcissist. Now what? Being in a relationship with someone who's always criticizing, belittling, gaslighting, and not committing to you is emotionally exhausting. How to prepare for a breakup with a narcissist? Constantly remind yourself that you deserve better. Strengthen your relationships with empathetic friends. Build a support network with friends and family who can help remind you what is reality. Urge your partner to go to therapy. Seek counseling. Get a therapist for yourself. You cannot change a person with narcissistic personality disorder or make them happy by loving them enough or by changing yourself to meet their whims and desires. They'll never be in tune with you. Never empathetic to your experiences and you'll always feel empty after an interaction with them. Narcissists can't feel fulfilled in relationships or in any area of their lives because nothing is ever special enough for them. Essentially, you will never be enough for them because they're never enough for themselves. Because the narcissist will most likely make attempts at contacting you and harassing you with calls and texts once they fully process the rejection, blocking them to help you stick with your decisions. Just block them. At this time, it is this information is meant to outline unacceptable behaviors and reactions in the context of a loving, equitable partnership. None of these signs point to a healthy relationship, narcissistic personality disorder or not. And having one or six of these signs doesn't make your partner a narcissist. Rather, it's good cause for reevaluating re whether or not you're thriving in your relationship. You're not responsible for their behavior, but you are responsible for taking care of yourself. You are responsible for taking care of yourself. If you feel that you are dating a narcissist, or if your partner is exhibiting all of the things that was said in the video today, it's probably safe to say that it's time to get out. It's definitely time to get out. That concludes my informational video on 11 reasons you could be dating a narcissist. And as always, all of my videos in this platform is for educational and informational purposes only. If you feel that you need any type of professional assistance or professional help, please don't hesitate to see your local outpatient mental health clinic, your psychologist, your psychiatrist, your own personal therapist, or even your primary care physician. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching the video. And until the next video, you have been in the safe zone with the Therapist Queen.